so welcome back and in this session we are going to discuss about the various methods which we can use to view the different sections of a solid now this skill of trying to view the sections of a solid what do we mean by section a section is simply a portion which you see when you cut the solid this i mean it's just a portion a two dimensional representation of a solid but just a part of it yeah you can say that that would be a section so how how can i see the different sections of a solid so there are three methods that we are going to discuss the first method is cutting to view the cross sections cutting method then the shadow method and then the third and an important method is looking from different angles so let's get started on our methods to view the different sections of a solid so the first method and it's quite obvious uh, that you can just cut or slice a particular solid and view its cross section a uh, most common example that you can take is a loaf of bread which is cut into slices so if you have an uncut loaf of bread you just see a cuboid structure but when the bread is cut then you can see the various sections as it is shown here so this is a section assuming that some bread has been taken away from the slopes similarly these regions here these white regions that we see these are nothing but these sections sections of the slope of bread that is one example then we have another example in and it's 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 most common is the cross sections of various vegetables which are cut for cooking in the kitchen in fact one important thing which you should note is that the cross section depends on the type of the cut made and in fact you could try this for yourself the best thing you can do is volunteer yourself to go and cut the vegetables in the kitchen and try to get a bit playful in trying to use the uh, in, in giving the different cuts so what you can do is you can provide vertical horizontal and slanting cuts on the vegetables you can take a carrot or you can take a tomato or you can take a potato or whatever just try to be a bit creative and see the various cross sections uh, of the vegetables and a word of caution be very careful with the knife so as not to hurt you so this is one of the most common examples using which you can see the cross section of solids now let us go on to the second method which is also called as the shadow method now if you recollect or if you just try to reflect have you ever seen your own shadow does does your shadow have depth no it doesn't right so shadows of a three dimensional objects are two dimensional for example our bodies are two dimensional but the shadows are two dimensional so we can use this method also to view the section of a solid so this is the type of arrangement that we can use to see the shadow method so wh wh what do we do is we take up a blank screen and then we have a solid a solid and then we have need a light source for example you can take a torch so and you can make the the room comfortably lighted not too much lighted so that it hinders this then you turn on the torch and put this object in between the torch and and the screen and you will see that there will be a shadow casted on the screen right because of the light that gets obstructed now if you see this this shadow here this shadow represents the cross section okay and this is a two dimensional representation now you can do some interesting experiments here first what happens if you change the position of the object so let's say that somebody is holding this light source steady or you just have a lamp or something which is for like pointed source of light this is steady and you try to change the position of the object that is you move it forwards or you can move it backwards or you can move it a little bit upwards or little bit downwards you can do that the other thing you can do is you keep this object steady 
at the same time you try to change the position of the light source you can change it in this direction right? you can make it upward downward or you can have it forward and backward it would be really interesting to see what is the impact of these variations of the light source and the object on the shadow one of the most interesting examples and most commonplace examples that you can see is that of an object which is cast by the sun sun is a light source for the objects so just try to reflect what happens when the sun is changing its position throughout the day what happens to let's say a pole of light that might possibly explain what you can see here by varying those two having said that let us now go on to the discuss the third method which is viewing an object from certain angles to get different views so basically what we do is we have a look at an object from the front side then from the side that is from the front from one one of the sides and from the top so let us say that we have a building now this is just one example we have taken now how would the building look when I see it exactly from the front that is from here I am not able to see everything I am just standing precisely in front of this I could see just this part this is the front view of this building now what happens when I go on to the side when I say side it is this side right and when I say I am standing on this side it means I am having a straight line of vision I am straight away looking into it right so I will look it will look something like this this is called the side view of this building this one was the front view and now let's say that we have some magical powers and we can go on the top and straight away look down or you just went upon a tree if you don't want to believe in magical powers you just went upon a tree and you will look down how does it look so this is your top view where you are seeing just this portion and this middle line is because of this folding so this is the front view the side view and the top view now there are a few interesting things that you can do with this so if we have this example right so we what is the front view the first view is the front view then the second one is the side view and the third one is the top view so you can see that the front and the top views are same in this case because of the dimensions of this this is one example the another example is this when we have a look at it from the front how does it look to us from the front which one is the front view in this case this is the front view this one then what will be the side view in the side view I must just be able to see two cubes so this is going to be our side view the middle one and when I have a look from top I can just see three cubes so this is my top view okay now let's take another example so which one is going to be front view I, I from if I'm standing here I can just see this triangle so this is my front view now when I have a look from the top so I can see this plus I will see a little bit of portion on this side as well so this is going to be my top view and I look from side I must just be able to see this one rectangle so this is my side view so that was the third method of viewing section on solids and with this we conclude our session thank you